glory of God. Who you are in the spirit is as glorious as anything in heaven. Your born again spirit is absolutely awesome. You are pure. You're holy. You've got the mind of Christ. First Corinthians 2, 16. That's not something that's going to happen when you get to heaven. When you get to heaven, the mind of Christ that's in your spirit is going to renew your physical mind and you're going to know all things, even as also you're known. But in your spirit right now, you know everything that God knows. Thank you, Van. (laughs) Some of you are thinking, why? That's not true. I couldn't even find my glasses and they were on top of my head. (laughs) You're talking about your physical mind up here. But you know what? In your spirit, your spirit knows everything that God knows. You have the mind of Christ. It says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, that you have an unction from the Holy One. That word unction means a special anointing or an endowment of power from the Holy One. And you know all things, all things, not some things, all things. You know everything. Colossians chapter three, verse 10 says, put on the new man. Again, that's just like these verses we've been reading. The new man is talking about this born again spirit, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that is created in him. You have the mind of Christ. You know, all things you're renewed in knowledge. Your spirit knows everything. And yet most people don't know what they have in their spirit. And so they just go through life saying, well, I'm only a man further along. We'll know all about it. We can't understand. And they just embrace lack and inadequacy and they don't even try. You know, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I could preach for an hour and a half on this one point. This is why speaking in tongues is so important. Because it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14, that when you pray in tongues, your spirit praise. The born again part that has the mind of Christ has an unction from God and you know all things. When you pray in tongues, it's your spirit praying. And the Bible says you are speaking forth the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. And then 1 Corinthians 14, 13 says, if you pray in tongues, pray also that you interpret. You know what? When you don't know what to do, you can start speaking in tongues. And when you speak in tongues, your spirit that knows all things is praying out this hidden wisdom of God. And all you got to do is say, Father, give me the interpretation. Show me what I'm, what I need to know. And God will show you things. Some of you think, oh, it couldn't be that simple. (laughs) It is that simple. You have to believe it. And it takes a while for you to get your mind renewed. That saying these words that to your physical, natural mind. And if somebody else was living, listening, they would say, this is just foolishness. This is gibberish. You don't make any sense. It takes a while for you to get beyond your fear and embarrassment and get into faith. But if you get into faith and start speaking by faith and standing on what the word says and going by what the word says, instead of what you feel, I guarantee you, God can interpret your tongue to you and give you answers that are so profound. There's not a person in here. I don't care if it's a physical problem. All you need is one little thought, revelation from God about how to solve that problem and instantly you're over it. Financial problems, all you need is a word from God and you can instantly solve your problem. If you have decisions in front of you, all you need is the mind of Christ, which you have in your born again spirit. And all you got to do is pray and ask God for an interpretation and instantly you can find out what to do. I've got a, an hour and a half, two hours worth of teaching on this one point that I'm making right here. I hadn't got time to teach you, but I'm telling you that you've got everything that you need in your spirit. See, this is what the Bible is referring to when it says that grace reigns through righteousness, understanding your righteous position, your, your identity in Christ. And most people do not know their identity in Christ. They are looking in the mirror and because they don't look awesome, they just don't think they're awesome because they look sick. They feel sick. They think they're sick, not knowing that they have the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living on the inside of them. 
And according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, he prays that your eyes would be open so that you could see the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. The same power that he used when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. You have the same power on the inside of you that raised Jesus from the dead. It's not out there in heaven someplace. And you have to pray it down. So much of our religious system is all based on a misunderstanding of these things. They'll say, you've got to get a hole through the heavens so that your prayers can get up to God. There's people that teach that. I bet you many of you right here have been under teaching about intercession and how we got to pray and get a hole so our prayers can get through the demonic realm and up into heaven, an open heaven. There's songs written about that. An open heaven, it's stupid. (laughs) Forgive me for being blunt, but I'm just running out of time. I'm talking as fast as I can. I'm just trying to get my point across. It's stupid. Well, what about, what about getting your prayers past all these things? You, you know, you'll have people say, well, that prayer didn't get above the ceiling. You don't need your prayers to get above your nose. God's right here in your born again spirit. That's the reason you bow your head when you pray. So you can say, father, amen. God's here. You don't need to get your, that's all not understanding our righteous position with the Lord. And so we got to go through these things and you got to have somebody with their collar turned around backwards to intercede between you and God. You don't know who you are in Christ. This whole thing about having a priest between you and God is an ungodly concept. Well, it's in the Bible. It's in the Old Testament. Before Jesus came, Jesus is now our high priest. And any person who tries to take the place of Jesus is antichrist. Was that too subtle? Anybody miss that one? I'm not against you. I'm just telling you the truth. Galatians 4, 16, am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I'm telling you the truth that we are righteous in Christ Jesus. And if you don't understand this righteousness and your connection and who you are and what you have, grace can't reign in your life. You've got to understand that grace produced all of this for us. The grace of God made you righteous. And when you called on Jesus and made him your Lord, then instantly you became full grown in your spirit. Your spirit isn't born again, a little tiny baby righteous spirit. You are identical to Jesus as he is. And I guarantee you, Jesus is not still growing and improving. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, the father, and he's absolutely perfect and mature. And your spirit is 100% complete. You don't need to get the word down into your spirit. You don't need to renew your spirit. You don't need any of these things. You don't need another touch. You don't need a double portion. You don't need the Holy Ghost to do more. You don't need more faith. You've already got as much faith as Jesus has in your spirit. Your spirit is perfect. It's complete. It's perfect. There's nothing wrong with your spirit. The problem's right between our ears. We don't know who we are in Christ. We are still seeing ourselves as a physical, natural man or woman with all of our limitations and faults and problems. But God is a spirit and God is looking at you in the spirit. And in the spirit, he sees you perfect. And yet here you are rolling up on your side and whimpering and whining and coming into the throne room. Oh God, I'm so unworthy. And oh God, how could you love me? And God just, one time I'd like you to stand up and act like you're righteous. One time I'd like you to come and jump in my lap like a child and say, daddy, and act like I'm not mad at you. One time I'd like you to act like you're righteous, like you're in right standing and that all of your sin, past, present, and even future tense sins have been dealt with. Brothers and sisters, most of us, Jesus has provided this awesome, awesome salvation and we're missing out on it because we don't know, we don't believe. We're going by what we feel and see with our eyes instead of what the word of God has to say. This is our spiritual mirror and you just hold it up. And when somebody asks you how you are, instead of saying, oh man, I got rheumatism. I got this. I've got that. You don't understand. I have, and you describe what's going on in your emotional realm. Instead, what you ought to do is say, well, let me see right here how I am. 
Oh, right here, Ephesians 1, 3. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and I'm not beneath. As Jesus is, so am I. I've got the same power living on the inside of me that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Is there anything else you would like to know how I... (laughs) And I've had people say, oh, I know that you're blessed and stuff, but I want to know how you really are. And I say, I really am blessed. I am really blessed. And then they'll say, but I want to know how you feel. I don't care how I feel. Some people are like, feeling is everything. It's nothing. And did you know when you quit enshrining feeling and putting it on a pedestal that I've got to feel this and you get to where you just start operating by fact. Did you know after a while, your feelings will take its thumb out of its mouth and it'll grow up and it'll begin to start saying, you know what, I really do feel pretty good, amen? And I really am blessed. But we have enshrined feeling. We put it in a place way beyond where it was supposed to go. And there's people, but I just don't feel like God loves me. Well, then your feelings are wrong. But I still feel sick. Well, your feelings are wrong. But I still feel anger at this person. Your feelings are wrong. Now, am I, am I telling you to deny that they exist? No. If you have wrong feelings, there's a reason for it. And it's because you have thought wrong and you've put value on stuff that you shouldn't. And so it's, it's something that you should deal with. But you know what? I guarantee you, I, I pray for people when I don't feel a thing. Because the Bible says, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And some of the greatest miracles I've ever seen in my life are when I felt nothing. Nothing. And I just pray for people and do it because of what the Word says. And I see great miracles. I've seen people raised from the dead when I felt nothing. I tell you, this transformed my life. Like I said, I saw the truth, this comparison five different times that in the same way you've accepted that you had a sin nature, now you just have to accept that you've got a righteous nature. I saw it, but I couldn't understand it until I understood that it was my spirit that was changed and I can't see or feel my spirit. I have to go to the word and whatever it says, I have to believe it. And I change my identity from who I see in the mirror to what God's word says about me. I am what God says I am. I don't care what I feel like. And I have spent the last 44 years of my life trying to live by that and renew my mind. And to the degree that I've renewed my mind, I've experienced awesome, awesome miracles and blessings. I am seeing wonderful things happen. And the things that I'm not seeing happen is because I hadn't totally got my mind renewed. It is amazing how difficult, it's as simple as what I've described, but it's difficult to get to where you go by what you believe instead of what you feel. You're going to have the whole world, Christians, well-meaning people, family members condemn you and say, I don't care what you say. You are a loser. People will remind you. Your ex will remind you. Amen. And your boss will remind you and every failure will remind you. I just did something this last week that anybody should be able to do. And I totally messed the whole thing up. And I remember sitting there thinking, how dumb can you get and still breathe? I said, why can't I do the simplest little thing? And you know what? I had a tendency to get down on myself. And I, you know what I started doing? I started saying, thank you, Jesus, that in the spirit, I'm righteous. And I just started focusing on who I am in Christ and saying, I don't care how much I am unable to do things in the natural realm. I still am awesome in the spirit. And I started thinking about who I was in Christ and got my emotions under control. I'm preaching better than you're listening. That's awesome. I tell you what, if you understood what I was talking about, grace would reign. It would dominate. It would dictate in your life. The grace of God, the goodness of God would abound in your life if you could understand your righteous position and it would bring you into this eternal life. 
an intimate, close, personal relationship with God to where you could actually run up and jump on God's lap. You don't deserve it in your flesh. Some of you still, your flesh just crawls when I say that. That's because you've never seen yourself outside of who you are in the natural. But in the spirit man, God would embrace you and accept you just as much as he would accept Jesus because your spirit man is identical to Jesus. As he is, that's the way you are right now in this world. Your spirit is as pure and righteous and holy as Jesus is. And because of that, you could run right up to God and hug him and he would accept it and you would be worthy of doing it in your spirit. In your spirit, you're worthy. In your spirit, you're righteous. Man, that's awesome. And you know, there's many spinoffs of this, but if you got this, you know what else it would do? If you changed your identity and saw yourself like this, there are some of you that are living at a very low standard. You're living ways that a Christian shouldn't live, but part of it's because that's the way you see yourself. You see yourself as a loser. You see yourself as a failure. You've always been a druggie. You've always been a drunk. You've always operated in pornography. You've always had sexual problems and you just, that's the way you see yourself and you'll resist to a degree, but after a while you give in because after all, that's the way you believe you are. But if you could see who you are in Christ and if you ever got a revelation of it, you would value that. You would love it so much that you wouldn't dare act like that. That's not who you are. Some of you act like the devil because you believe you have the nature of the devil on the inside of you. That's not true. And I know many of you have a big question mark there. If you'll come back tonight, I'm going to show you how you do not have a sinful nature anymore. How that that has been taken away. And I'll answer some questions. And this will make a big difference. But I tell you what, this transformed my life. I just can't help but believe that if you would understand and embrace these things the way that God's shown them to me, it would transform you. This is what changed my life. Grace reigns through righteousness unto eternal life. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did in our lives. You know, if there's any of you here today that don't know Jesus personally, then the things that I've been saying don't apply to you. You have a sinful nature that is separated from God. And regardless how much you try in your actions to change, you can change your actions to a degree, but you cannot change your nature. Your good actions don't change your bad nature. You have to be born again. You just have to humble yourself and come and make Jesus your Lord and receive righteousness as a free gift. If you've never done that, you need to do that. And if you are born again, you absolutely need this baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's many things that happen, but like I was talking today, people just don't understand that when you're praying in tongues, you are releasing the hidden wisdom of God. There's a lot of people that just pray in tongues to prove that they got the Holy Spirit. They do it when they come forward, they receive it, they speak in tongues, and then they go 10 years and never speak in tongues again. Man, you are missing one of the greatest tools that God ever gave us for moving into this spirit realm. When you pray in tongues, it is absolutely foolishness to your mind. And if you stay in the natural as just a carnal person, you'll quit praying in tongues. You can't do it carnally. But you know what? If you continue to pray in tongues, it makes you get over into faith, into the spirit realm. You will start thinking on spiritual things. And it's just like a can opener that will open up this life of God that's on the inside of you and let the Holy Spirit start flowing. It's really important. You need the ability to speak in tongues. If there's anybody here today who doesn't have one or both of those, if you aren't born again, but you'd like to be, and if you are born again, but if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, You need that. This is two things that every single person should have. Every person. Is there anybody here who would say, man, I'd like one or both of those and I want you to pray for me. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand and I want to pray for you. Anybody? Here's numbers of people. We had how many last night? 88 or 87. Wasn't that awesome?
And how many got born again last night? They're one, one apart. But you know, anyway, it's one of those two, six or seven. And 88 baptized in the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesus. I had a lady come up to me this morning and her daughter received the baptism of the Holy Spirit last year and just was giving a tremendous testimony about how it's just transformed her life. She's never been the same. I tell you, this is the most life transforming experience you can have with the Lord outside of being born again. And when you get born again, that's an internal thing. It's your spirit that got changed. And it sometimes and sometimes doesn't manifest itself outwardly. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, That is all to release this power in your life. As far as your outward experience goes, I believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the most life-transforming experience you can have. It's really, really important. So, you know, if if you raised your hand or if you were supposed to raise your hand but didn't do it, would you just get up out of your chair and come forward and let me pray with you right here and we want to help you to receive. So come forward right now. And isn't this great? You're never going to be the same. You're going to be stronger than horseradish. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't this wonderful? This lady was a, a Sikh, is that right? And she just got born again a short time ago. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesus. And now you're coming to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I tell you what, there's no other religion on the planet that compares with Christianity. They have doctrines, but we have a Savior, a person who lives on the inside of you. And then the Holy Spirit comes and empowers you. You know, the things that I'm talking about, no other, no other religion on the face of the world can compare to this. The things I'm saying, they just, there is no comprehension of this kind of stuff. Man, we have such a wonderful salvation. What God has done for us is absolutely awesome. We just need to get a full revelation of what we've already got. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and setting us free. Amen. Before I can pray with you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you must be born again. Jesus is the one who gives the Holy Spirit, so you have to receive the giver before you receive the gift. Is there anybody down here who's not absolutely certain that you've ever really turned your life over to Jesus and that you've been born again and you want to pray first about that? That's good. You can't receive the Holy Spirit until you receive Jesus first. Anybody besides this one lady? Here's another one down here. Praise God. Anybody else? Anyone else? You know, there's a lot of people who think that they're born again because they're a good person and they go to church and they believe that there's a God. The Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 19, it says, you believe that there's one God, you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. But won't you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. It takes more than just acknowledging that God exists. You have to make him your Lord. Romans 10, 9 says, if you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So maybe you are a good person. Maybe you acknowledge that God exists, but have you ever made him your Lord? Have you committed your life to him? If you haven't, you need to pray this prayer with me and make sure that you're born again. Anybody else besides these two ladies? Anyone else? Are you sure? Here's another one. Here's another one. I'm not trying to talk you out of your faith. I'm just saying, are you sure? You can't just assume. The Bible says that when you pray, you have a witness in yourself and you know that you have passed from death unto life. If you don't have that witness, if you don't have a confidence that when you stand before God, that you'll be accepted because you've put faith in Jesus, you need to pray this prayer with me. So anybody else? I think we had four total, five here. Amen. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. This isn't magic. It's not just repeat the words and it automatically works. The Bible says you have to confess it with your mouth and believe it with your heart. So you have to believe this. But if you will believe what I'm going to lead you, I want you to repeat after me. And if you will believe the words that you're saying, then you'll be born again. 
you'll receive this new spirit right now. Isn't that awesome? Now, I want to ask everybody here, if they would, to repeat this with me so that they won't feel like we're just listening to them, okay? Let's everybody say, Father, I'm sorry for my sin. And I believe that Jesus died to forgive my sin. And I receive that forgiveness right now. Jesus, I make you my Lord. I believe that you are alive and that you now live in me. I am forgiven. I am saved. Right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You believe that? You believe that? Awesome. Awesome. Well, according to the Bible, whether you feel anything, you know, you still look the same on the outside, but in the spirit, everyone who prayed that and believed it, you're a brand new person on the inside. Everything I was talking about this morning has just happened to you and you can't feel it, but I tell you, it happened in the spirit realm. And one of the things that the scripture says multiple times about people who make Jesus their Lord is that you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is important because we're asking the Holy Spirit to come. God created you. These that just got born again in your spirit, you were created to be a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. It's what God made you for. So he would never deny you the Holy Spirit. This is what he made you for. So we aren't going to beg. You don't have to plead and, uh, you know, get rid of all of the problems in your life. If you could get rid of all of the problems in your life before you receive the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. The very reason that he's given to us is to give us power so that we can overcome things. So don't let some sense of unworthiness or you haven't done something right stop you from receiving. God is going to give every one of you the Holy Spirit. Luke eleven thirteen 13 says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So you're going to ask and God, God promised he would give you the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to lead you in a very simple prayer. And then I'd like our prayer ministers to come up here and they're going to stand behind you and they're going to lay hands on you. Cause in the Bible, people would lay hands on people and the Holy Spirit would be released into them. So I'm going to lead you in this prayer. And then these prayer ministers are going to lay hands on you and release this power of the Holy Spirit to come into your life. And after they lay hands on you, not right now, but after they lay hands on you and release this power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to quit asking God for the Holy Spirit. There's a time to ask, but then there's a time to believe that you receive. So after they lay hands on you, I want you to quit asking and just start thanking him. And at that time, I want you to put your hands up like when somebody sticks a gun in your back and you just go, I surrender. This, the Bible says that when you lift up your hands, this blesses the Lord. God's pleased with this. And so they're, I'm going to lead you into prayer. They're going to lay hands on you and pray. And then I want you to lift your hands and just start thanking God that he gave you the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you feel like, believe the word. And then those of us who have the baptism of the Holy Spirit are going to start speaking in tongues. Because the Bible says when you speak in tongues, you're giving thanks well, 1 Corinthians 14, 17. So we're going to start thanking God for what he did in your life by speaking in tongues. And as we start speaking in tongues, I want you to speak in tongues with us. I want you to quit praying in English and just start speaking in tongues. And I know some of you are like, well, how do you do this? I've got a book that I'm going to give everybody and it will explain it and answer your questions. I'm not going to take a lot more time, but you need to go ahead and speak in tongues. And if you're ready, you can do it right now. Let me share with you the number one thing that kept me and other people, I believe, from speaking in tongues is that people think that the Holy Spirit's going to force you to do it. It's going to be like when you throw up, you can't stop it. It just comes out. That's not the way speaking in tongues is. It's like when I spoke this morning. I believe that God spoke through me. I believe he inspired it, but he didn't take my mouth and make it talk. If I had just opened up my mouth and stuck my tongue out and waited on God to make me speak, we'd still be standing here. God didn't force me. I spoke, but I believe it was inspired by God. That's the way speaking in tongues is. You have to speak. 
You have to make sounds. He's not going to force you to speak in tongues. You have to do it and by faith believe that the Holy Spirit's inspiring it. And I tell you, at first, you'll be listening to yourself and critical of yourself and wondering, is this really God? But the moment you can get past yourself and just start in faith, speaking, you'll find out it just flows out of you. It's inspired by God. And I've got a lot of other things that these books will answer, but that's what we're going to do. And I believe that every one of you is going to receive and speak in tongues. Amen. The Bible said believers will speak with other tongues. I want you to say, I'm a believer and I will speak in tongues. Father, I thank you for all of these. Thank you, Father, for the ones who receive salvation today. And I just thank you that we are all the temple of the Holy Spirit. You created us to fill with the power of your Holy Spirit. So right now, we open up our hearts. We open up the doors of our temple. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to come into our life right now. We want your power. And so we open our hearts and receive now in Jesus' name. Now we lay hands on you and say in the name of Jesus Christ, receive this power of the Holy Spirit. We loose this anointing of the Holy Spirit to flow into these lives right now in Jesus' name. Boy, that's the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let's lift your hands and start thanking God that He gave you the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me the Holy Spirit. Thank you that I have your power, that I have this gift of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who know how to pray in tongues, let's begin to just worship the Lord and speak in tongues. And as we speak in tongues, I want you to join in with us and just begin to speak. You can't talk in tongues with your mouth closed. You got to open your mouth. If you don't know what to say, you can try and say what the person behind you is saying. But your tongue is going to be unique to you. It won't be the same as anybody else. If you try and say what they're saying, it'll come out differently. And when it does come out differently, don't stop. Just keep talking. Just keep talking. Just keep going. Let's worship the Lord. When you pray in tongues, it's not your brain. It's your spirit praying. The part of you that knows all things. You're bypassing the doubt and the unbelief that's in your brain. And you're praying out of this born again spirit. You're releasing supernatural anointing. You build yourself up on your most holy faith. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Man, when a child speaks at first, it doesn't sound like English, but it... The parent knows exactly what that kid's saying. God's listening to your heart. You're bypassing all of the doubt and the unbelief in your mind. You're praying to God out of this born again spirit. Man, many, many, many of these people are praying in tongues. It looks to me like just about everyone is speaking in tongues. Man, that's awesome. Awesome. Let me interrupt you. Let me have your attention here for just a minute. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you know whether you spoke in tongues or not, I believe God gave you the Holy Spirit because He promised He would. You know, I'm not speaking in tongues right now, but I can. I can speak in tongues. I can start and stop it anytime I want to. Somebody says, well, can you just turn the Holy Spirit on and off? Nope. He's on all the time. It's me that's on and off. And anytime I want to pray in tongues, I can pray in tongues. You need to understand some things, and I've written it all in a book. Even if you didn't pray in tongues, I believe God gave you the Holy Spirit. You just need to understand how to do it. You know, when I first prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it took me three and a half years before I prayed in tongues, but that's because I was a Baptist. 
And I'd been told that this was of the devil and I was so fearful and had my thinking so messed up that I just wouldn't let it happen. And finally, I got my questions answered. I've written all of these things in a book. And I can promise you, nobody in here has got a question about the Holy Spirit that I don't think I've answered in this book. I had every doctrine against it. And I'll share this with you. It's a free gift. We want you to get this book because you need to understand fully what's happened to you to get the benefit of it. So I'd like to give this to you. Robert right here is a man that's got his hand up with the Bible. And if you'll follow him, he's got those books in a room right next door. And he'll give you a book. There are people there that will pray with you. They'll help you. They'll answer questions. If you need prayer for healing or any of those kind of things, they will pray with you and help you. We just want you to get the maximum benefit from what happened. So if you would, just follow Robert and get that free book. It'll help you to understand what's happening. Praise the Lord. Isn't this awesome? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Did you speak in tongues? Well, I saw you over there when I said you were going to speak in tongues and you go, oh, that's the reason you hadn't done it yet. Let Ashley or one of them talk to you. And they'll you. All right. God bless you. Praise the Lord. And you came and received the Holy Spirit. This is the one whose daughter has just been revolutionized by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Awesome. I can't do it right now. I'll be doing it later. You know, let me remind you that we have this meeting for the ministers. If there's any ministers in here that would still like to take advantage of this continuing education, they're meeting in the Magnolia Room, down past registration. These are all of our prayer ministers. And these people are here to minister to you and help you any way that they can. We saw lots of miracles happen last night. I prayed and called out a lot of healings and we saw, I don't know, dozens of people that instantly had pain leave. And uh, Carly told me uh, this morning that there was people running back and forth across here who had been having pain and couldn't get around. We saw some great miracles happen. And so these people are people that are well qualified to minister the word and to help you. So if any of you need prayer for anything, I'd like to give you an invitation right now to come forward and let one of our prayer ministers just agree with you and lay hands on you. They can give you more time than what I have to do. I know that there's a lot of people think I'm the only one that can pray for you, but it's not true. These people have the same Holy Ghost. It's God that makes the difference. And I want to encourage you, if you want prayer for anything right now, just come forward. Let one of our prayer ministers agree with you and pray. Man, if that's you, come forward right now. Did we get everybody prayed for? Not many people are moving. That's great. Amen. But if you need prayer, that's what they're here for. The rest of you, let me remind you that we have CDs of last night and this morning already duplicated. We also have DVDs of both services already duplicated. And uh, you can get those back there, and they would be a real blessing to you. We'll be back tonight at 7 o'clock, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, and then tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. On Saturday night, we start at 6 o'clock so my staff can get out uh, a little bit earlier. So praise God. If you need prayer, come forward. The rest of you, you're dismissed. We'll see you tonight.